Welcome to our second sports tech talk with Apadme, and thank you to everyone on our last talk with the founder of Spoke, Richard Lang. Um, some big news to announce uh, this month. We have released our first phase of work with Chelsea Football Club, uh, Blue Fuel. Uh, it's a professional sports nutrition service which has been launched by Chelsea Digital Ventures, a digital first business spun out of the football club. Uh, the services utilises the in-house expertise at Chelsea from the sports scientists to help you perform better. Um, so go and check it out. So on to our speaker. Um, to say I was buzzing when we got this one confirmed would probably be an understatement. As a big fan of the NFL, um, I've always known about the story. Um, so I want to introduce Phoebe Schechter, the first female British coach in the NFL and the chair of diversity inclusion at British American Football Association. Welcome, Phoebe. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to chat with you about this. I always love NFL fans. <laughs> no, that's cool. So where, whereabouts? You're not in the UK at the minute, are you? No, I'm actually in the States right now. Um, to be honest, it's much nicer weather over here <laughs> at the moment. So uh, if I'd come over here for a couple months, get some football in, and it's, it's been really good. Thank you. Uh, you're probably right about the weather. Just looking out the window right now, yes, it, there's a lot of rain um, and wind. So, yes, you're right. <laughs> uh, so I think for people that don't know, obviously, your story, I, I heard about you know, your story around about sort of 2017, 2018, I think when you hit the, sort of the headlines. Um, but for people that don't know, it'd be great to find out about your journey within coaching um, and obviously within the NFL. Yeah, sure. Um, so obviously, despite my accent, I've lived in the UK now for going on eight years. And I've been able to do that because my mom is British, so therefore I've got dual citizenship. And before I moved over there, I knew nothing about American football. I found it really hard to follow because it's so start, stop, and there's so many people. Um, so the irony of this whole journey is it happened once I moved to the UK. Um, and I originally moved to the UK to work for someone on the Dutch Olympic team with three-day eventing. So horses, which has always been my life, and that's why kind of that Manchester Cheshire area makes so much sense for me. Um, but I basically had trials for a team in Manchester uh, and crazily enough had made it because I'd never played contact sport before. I didn't know anything about American football, but... I think when you've got an American accent, they think you can throw a football and be some stud player. So I tried. I wasn't very much a stud at that. But uh, I started my playing career, which eventually got to a point that I knew I'd be, I wouldn't be able to play forever, um, despite being able to represent Great Britain and still do technically. Um, I've been the captain of the team now for six years. So I don't know where time is going. But um, yeah, so I knew I, I'd get into coaching and for me, it was a really great opportunity to learn and grow, but also to give back to the country that had really given me so many opportunities, even up to that point. Uh, so when I started my coaching career, I basically got involved in something called the Women's Careers Forum, which is this really exciting networking event that the NFL was putting on, uh, on the, in the States. And they would have all these big name people from different departments in the NFL and you basically get to network and ask really, you know, honest questions of them. And, and they were really great about giving you honest answers as to what their lives were like. Um, you know, we had head coaches like Ron Rivera, uh, Dean Blandino, who's a big stats guy, um, owners like Kim Pagula, and then GMs like Scott Pioli. So, I mean, really a breath of wow. incredible people. Yeah, it was mildly intimidating at the time. <laughs> I can imagine, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so went to these forums, kept networking with people, uh, and then eventually applied for something called the Bill Walsh Diversity Fellowship. And essentially what that is, is an open door for minorities. And you apply, you choose five teams, and hope that one of them gets back to you. Uh, and then for me, that's really what happened. So it came down to the Falcons and the Bills. Um, and it's always my favorite story because you know, I really hadn't had that much interaction with the Bills and I was really almost like fully in with the Falcons in terms of my decision. And I just remember getting, I finished my, my meeting with the Falcons. I got an email from my phone from the head coach, Sean McDermott, uh, just saying to call him. And I, I called him right away and I just remember being on the phone with him and he goes, you know, are you in contact with any other teams? And I really wanted to be transparent with him. So I said, yes, you know, I'm speaking with Scott Pioli. Uh, and he goes, okay, from the Falcon, sorry. And he goes, okay, well, 
tell Scott, you, you know, you say thank you, but you're going to be a bill. And that was it. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Mic <amazing>. drop moment <laughs> for him. <laughs> oh, and that was it. So I went to my first training camp in 2017. Uh, the, then from there went on to Bryant University, which is probably one of the biggest learning curves because you essentially get what they call $500 of bulldog bucks, which is basically like a meal plan uh, for the whole season. I eat a lot of food. 500 does not cover that. <laughs> um, but you have that. You don't get paid. It's all volunteer. I lived in my head coach's basement. I would run to work. Um, but definitely very good for character building and kind of creating my own story. Uh, and then the following year, went to back to training camp with the Bills, this time with a different positional group. And at the end of training camp, he asked if I wanted to stay on uh, and, and be there for the season through to OTAs and all of that. And it just kind of kept going. So it's definitely been a whirlwind, that's for sure. I think, like, like I said at the start, it's, it's, it's an amazing story. Um, and I think, you know, what the NFL have done there is, is absolutely brilliant. And like, like we've spoken before, you weren't the first one there at, at the Bills, which kind of shows the organisation. And obviously, I know one of the owners as well was, was key in your sort of decision to go there as well. So from, I suppose from that then, how did you... This sort of coaching intern that came in, and you know, the first British female coach, and how did you sort of, how did the players take it? Was it um, a positive? Was it? <laughs> yeah, to be fair, you know, I know this buzzword culture gets thrown around so much, but that is a big part of it. And who you are as the head of an organization has to be, you know, that culture, what you believe in, has to be passed down through to everyone you have working for you. So for us, through to the coaches, who then let that trickle down into the players. Um, so an organization like the Bills and Stanford, Bryant, really all of those organizations have really great leaders who get this message across and they truly believe in it. And, you know, it takes time. It's definitely a process that you have to keep pushing, but that, that definitely plays into everybody within the organization. And for me, you know, all the players have been great. All the coaching staff has been great. You know, when I first got there, one of the, the funny things we did was, we were trying to find a way to kind of speed up that trust process between myself and the players, just because they don't know who I am. They don't know what I can do. I definitely was very open with the idea that I in no way knew as much as they did. They'd been playing the sport since they were four years old. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I didn't feel I was quite in a place to tell them in some of the more scheme ways. Yeah. So we actually made a, a highlight film of, my tackling from American football and I play a sport called Kabaddi. So from <laughs> Kabaddi and American football. So tackling's my thing. Yeah. And um, yeah, we showed all of our defensive players and that was kind of like, okay, she can tackle. She's not afraid. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that was like my first big buy-in with them. And then from there, it's just, you know, really just keep building that trust, whether it's showing up in the workout room and working out at the same time and they see your work ethic or, you know, if they ask a question and I don't know the answer, just being able to say, hey, I don't know, but I'll get you an answer right away. Just being honest and true to, yeah. you know, who you are. Obviously, from my background from professional sports, I know what it's like going into a dressing room or, a, you know, a practice where you're, you're the newbie and kind of no one really knows who you are. And, uh, yeah, I think you were looking at your highlights reel that you could quickly sort of show. I never had that, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think sort of one thing from my side is that I, I've always looked at the NFL and sort of coaching in, in the US as being very advanced from a technology point of view. Um, as a coach, sort of, how has technology a help to you, you know, with the video sessions, with everything else that you did around that? Yeah, I mean, the technology element of it is so key to us, as, as like, and pairing that with stats as well i mean that's really big too because you've got so many players you need to make sure that you're equally judging them not just how you feel about a player because that's not always accurate but actually on paper what are they good at what are they bad at how can we you know kind of grade them all the time and they are being graded all the time um so for us film is is life film is key you know, if you're in the building and you've got nothing to do, you, you better be doing it and, and watching film at the same time. Um, we really want our guys to buy into that culture. And at that level, you, you have to. And as coaches, it's the same exact thing. We are constantly watching film, breaking down film, um, you know, drawing up plays. So we use Visio, which is actually more like an architectural kind of 
um, yeah. program. Uh, Exos is the, is the organization or company we use for our film. I mean, but they do everything for us because we can put in, in our language what we're seeing from another team, how we want to break that down. All of our practices are filmed. So uh, even in individual periods, we're going to have, you know, exact film of hand placement, foot placement. And then up to when, during the game, when we're up in, so I sit in the box and we use Microsoft surfaces that literally take a picture of the play um, and kind of break it down into four sections. And then we're able to show the players as well. So that instant feedback, which is why sometimes you'll see the quarterback sat down with the surface and the coach is talking to him. That is literally showing them the instant feedback. What was the defense doing? This is what they showed us, but this is what they moved to. Yeah. I think it's very interesting. I think, you know, like I say, from my side, I, I was probably a little bit late for a lot of the technology advances in football. But I think certainly from some of the work that we've done at Padme with the likes of SailGP, um, SailGP is a real-time video second screen viewing from a fan engagement point of view. But then also for the athletes themselves, the sailors, you can get real-time data you know, from the boats. I think at the end of every race weekend, there's upwards of 4 billion data requests from the boats. Um, and as a fan, you can engage with the solution through understanding the data, the speed of the boat, the height of the boat, wind speed, all this kind of stuff. And I do feel that sports like motor racing, uh, sailing, and a lot of US-based sports, certainly the NFL, are so advanced in what they are doing and moving things forward. And um, so I find it really, really interesting. I think as well, you know, we've, like I say, we've just done the, the work for Chelsea Football Club. Um, again, that's all around digital, but that's around nutrition. And throughout lockdown, the players from the men's and the women's team were using this, um, you know, for, you know, what to eat. You know, we're, everyone's training schedule obviously went out the window. Um, so it was all around how they could manage themselves throughout those weeks or months in the end, wasn't it, um, of how to make themselves perform the best they could do. Um, and I think, is there anything else that you've seen within the NFL or even sort of, you know, as I say, sort of tag that you're involved with as well, tag football, it, where technology really is sort of something now that you, you could never do without? Yeah, I mean, I, I have to say film is definitely a thing, but actually going forward, I mean, we use GPS trackers in all of our practices, right. um, you know, that way we can monitor their workloads, their speeds, like what you were saying in terms of the fan engagement. If you see a player is running 21 miles an hour in practice, well, actually, as a human, you can understand that. You don't have to be an athlete to understand that is fast yeah. for a human yeah. to run. Um, it was actually interesting you said Chelsea Football Club, our sports performance, um, our sports scientist, she used to work at Chelsea Football Club, Joe wow. Club. Yeah, so proper Brits representing out in uh, Buffalo, New York. We get everywhere. <laughs> I know. I love it. I love it. <laughs> um, but, no, you know, it's. I definitely, it always comes back to film for us just because it's such an integral part of what we do. And, you know, I had this talk the other day with someone, they said, if, you know, would you not want to cut back on film? I don't see how you possibly do it because you'd have to make sure all, you know, all 32 teams cut back on the same just to make it fair because you can learn so much about someone from film. You could probably take away the surfaces if you really needed to during the game in terms of technology, but I, film tells you so much about yourself and it changes how you give feedback on the field because you know, hey, we'll check out that film later. It's a, it's a great point. And I think, you know, in, in sort of two examples that I have is one from my personal experiences where a coach would always say, listen, let's not talk about it now. Let's look at the video after the game and the bus on the way home or on Monday morning. And then the other side of that is the sales GP stuff again, is that, you know, these athletes are, you know, they're, as they are in the race, they could be a mile out at sea but the data is coming straight back to their performance analysts onshore. They understand what the boats are doing and what the athletes are doing. And within all this real-time data, now, as you say, within the NFL, that is exactly what coaches, players, fans, broadcasters, everybody wants now. Yeah. Um, I think sort of moving on, so I am really intrigued about your, your role at BAFA. Is that correct? You yeah. say that right? Um, is that a new role? Is that something that's been, you've, sort of, you've come in that's new or how does that work? Yeah, so the whole role entirely is new, which is exciting. We've got a new CEO this year. So this is the first time that our organization has ever actually had a CEO who's, who's paid. That sounds ridiculous for a sporting agency or a sporting organization governing body. But actually, it's always been volunteers in the past. And, you know, volunteers have great hearts and they want to do their best. But at the end of the day, 
you know, you have to be realistic with what you can do. So, um, you know, we're really moving in the right direction with what we're trying to achieve. We just got a for England grant, which is massive for this, for the American football. Um, and then in terms of my role, I'm really excited about it because there's so many, we've just put the, well, we have the committee interviews in two weeks, so we'll finalize all of that. And for us, it's just going to be about creating really exciting initiatives that just, you know, kind of get the word out there about our sport, but also show how inclusive and diverse our stakeholders really are. I mean, the best thing about American football for me is that you can be any shape, size, background, whatever it may be. And it doesn't matter. You can speak different languages. It doesn't matter. You, you just have to be on the field and be able to speak the language of American football. I always love that um, we use this example because we've got a girl on our team who's four foot 11 and we've got a girl on our team who's six foot four. And they're, <laughs> they're doing, you know, they're, they're working together. They're on the same side of the ball. So it's just a, a really great example of, how diverse we have to be and we are but also I, I like to look at American football almost like a little snapshot of society you know you because you do have people from all different backgrounds you learn how to work with different people and you learn so much about other people's people's cultures it's just really exciting to yeah. be about and I, I want our committee to be able to reflect that and put out some really exciting new initiatives that um you know get people excited about it yeah. Uh, that, that sounds amazing. I think, obviously, with the new Tottenham Stadium that's now been built, um, where the NFL uh, will be staging, I think, a large majority of their games moving forward. And, and I, I know the NFL obviously invested quite heavily into that stadium. You've now got the NFL, I think it's UK Academy now. Um, so this is probably one of the first times, I think, obviously, NFL Europe in the past. Um, where do you see NFL and American football going in, in the UK? I know we've spoken that I want to practice with Chester, uh, which didn't last too long. <laughs> <laughs> You've got teams in Manchester. I know there's quite a heavy involvement from universities now. What do you see? The, how do you see the future of American football in the UK? Yeah, and I think it's just going to keep growing. It's a really exciting time for us. You know, like I said, we've got a new CEO, Pete Ackerley, who's brilliant. Um, we've got these new ties with the um, Canadian Football League. So that's really exciting because people have other exit strategies and opportunities. NFL Academy is for that kind of 16 to 19 year old, um, which will eventually open up to females as well. Um, and then probably one of the most exciting announcements lately. So we have in the World Games in 2022, I think it is, will be flag football. And that is the next stepping stone to get our sport into the Olympics. Yeah. So not only are we now kind of hitting every age group, we're now really emphasizing to the younger generation, hey, 2028, when those Olympics are in Los Angeles, potentially we could have flag football there. And those, you know, year four, five, six, what they may be right now, could potentially be competing in the Olympics for their country. Um, so it's just so exciting because You've got the contact element, the non-contact element, people can be able to continue their education and play sport. I mean, yeah. that's massive because education has to be a priority for you. Um, so yeah, it's just, you know, I'm, I'm buzzing about the whole situation and I just think there's so much opportunity. It's just gonna keep developing. Um, there's obviously, you know, they can go out to Europe and the GFL or Finland, Maple League, whatever it may be, and play out there. Uh, I know there's a, some teams in the U.S. for females that are, are now starting right. the next season uh, that will be semi-pro. So we've got a bunch of oh. British girls going out to play. I mean, it's really, really taking off and just an exciting time to be within our sport. That's really cool. And I think, I think what would be good, I, like I say, I, I could probably talk to you about you know, football and you know, what you're doing all day long, but... What are you doing from, I know you've mentioned something about UK Dukes that you're working on at the minute and it's, you know, a real big passion of yours. I mean, you know, fire away about sort of what you're doing with that at the minute. Yeah. So one of our most exciting things right now is we've actually written a children's book. Um, <laughs> yeah. It seems very random, but actually it's going to be translated into seven languages and it's all about introducing the sport of flag football. So the non-contact yeah. version Brilliant. to little kids. Um, and I really love it because we've got a female lead in the book, of course, and there's actually not many books that show little girls yeah. that they can do that. So, you know, that's something we're really passionate about. We've also got 
um, leagues and tournaments starting up just to give people within the country yeah. who, you know, you want to play the club element just to give them more opportunities to play and yeah. working, you know, trying to use COVID to our advantage really and see, see what people actually want and need. Um, and then we're also going to be, uh, <laughs> my computer is doing all sorts of funny things at the moment. Uh, and then we're also, we have a schools program. So again, working, if you're working towards the Olympics and the world, um, we're going to have programs that basically teach the teachers how to deliver flag football. So any information on that, literally just any form of UK jukes into social media and we can get you whatever you need. That's really interesting. I think just sort of following on to that, it flows quite well, is that, you know, what would you say then? So as you say, you're, you're looking at doing the book, you're looking to grow the sport around the UK and obviously the US as well, where it's all. But what would you say to a, either a young female who's been playing and sort of has a real interest in American football? What would you say to them now to get involved into either a group or coaching? Yeah, and, and literally just straight get involved. You know, the way that you can grow and and just learn as much as possible from other people putting yourself in groups to absorb that information just get involved ask as many questions as possible and really at the end of it all just believe in yourself because if you don't believe in yourself nobody else can can really give you their full belief in you uh and you you'll earn every every step and every opportunity that you get so yeah, get involved and believe in yourself. No, that's really cool. So I think sort of from there, like I say, I could spend all day talking to you about, you know, the background, the story and sort of how you got to where you are today. But um, thank you very much for your time. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, like I say to everybody, please go out and check out Phoebe's social pages. Go and check out UK Dukes. Uh, we'll be sure to share those once we sort of release the video. Uh, also as well, don't forget to go and check out the latest work that we've done with Chelsea Football Club and our work with Sales UP. And Phoebe, once again, thank you very much. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it.